after all this technical discussion, I want to speak about sex for just a minute. Excellent. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm interested in what sexuality looks like in the second tier higher MEMS. Right. What is healthy and unhealthy in your view? Right. I'm also interested in what the devotional energy of the second tier or higher MEMS are. Okay. And what is healthy and unhealthy in, in your view okay. uh, in that regard? Uh, second tier sex is sex with all species. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> it, <laughs> as part of a commonwealth of being. <laughs> and we don't marginalize any of them. <clears throat> <laughs> There's a... As is so often the case, sexuality and spirituality and words like that can have so many different meanings. And there's a narrow meaning of sexuality is the, in, in the traditions is the energy that's confined to the second chakra. And that really means prana with a capital P that's basically being used at one level of expression for one primary purpose, which is the reproduction of the biological species. But then there's sexuality in a broader sense, which is eros, capital E. And so these two would be related by saying that there's an eros at every chakra or an eros at every level. And an eros at the second chakra is genital sexuality. Eros at the first chakra is oral or anal sexuality and so on. So any of the, there's an erogenous zone at every chakra. Uh, eros, though, what happens is the as it gets higher, there are more and more beings that are encompassed in the circle of blissful love embrace. And now that doesn't mean genital embrace. It may, but let me give an example of that at, at yellow, because some people get confused and they think that, that being ethical means that you have to follow just a particular code. In other words, you can't have sex or you have to just have monogamy or just sex within marriage or something like that. But there's, it, it, by the time you get to second tier, there's almost no act that in and of itself is unethical. And what, is, what determines whether it's ethical or not is that the circle of intersubjectivity, the circle of communication of those affected by the action, is taken into account when you do the action. So you can have an open marriage if there really is, and this is very, self-deception is so easy here, particularly because what the way men explain sex to women. <laughs> <laughs> we tell you all the truth, it just takes too long. <laughs> you, it, it's, but you have, I have known a handful of open marriages where both partners remained committed to each other and had sexual liaisons outside of the marriage because they both were very clear about it, they both talked about it, and they both dealt with it. In most cases, they end up curtailing that activity just because there are too many other things that get too messy too quickly. Too many feelings get hurt, too many people, and so on. So, it, so in that, in, just in terms of behavior, Almost any behavior is open to sexuality, but it has to be part of this increasing circle of people that are part of the actions that are being affected. Now, interiorly, what happens with sexuality in, in capital S is the great province of Kundalini and higher Tantra Yoga. And that's another aspect of this, and that literally is a whole series. There are many, many forms of this, but it's a whole series of visualizing these subtle energies in the body and particularly raising energy from the lower chakras up into the sixth and seventh, and then also bringing the energies up here down into the lower chakras. And the simplest way, and it's a sexual blissful feeling. It literally is a sexual overflowing, and then it gets more than sexual, it, it can only be described as bliss, and then it gets more than bliss and can only be de described as god or goddess, that kind of thing. And typically the religions that engage in that have images of a man and woman in sexual union. And that's how you actually start visualizing yourself. And at some point you use what's, act, what's called an action consort, which means a live human being with real sex. And it's the simplest way to think about that, because it's obviously a very complex issue, but these are the highest tantras now. And, yeah, and before I say that, let me, let me preface that, because in the Nyingma tradition, for example, there are nine yanas, or nine vehicles, or nine stages of unfolding. And the first two are Theravadan, 
so and that means shamatha and vipassana. You have to be able to demonstrate mind control that you can actually do vipassana meditation for you know, extended periods of time. Then you go to Mahayana training. And in Mahayana training, it's primarily Tong Lin. So you have to exchange self and other for years sometimes. So you breathe in other people's suffering and you breathe out your own peace and, and realization. And that's a very powerful practice. And you have to demonstrate competence in that. Then you move to the higher six, which are the three outer tantras and the three inner tantras. By the time you get to, to the, the inner tantras, the highest of those, which means the ninth of nine, is Dzogchen, or Mahaati. And the one right before that is highest yoga tantra, Anuttara tantra. And that's where you're actually using these internal currents. And the simplest way to explain that is you can picture these as, in the lower realm, you can think of as life with a capital L. And in the upper, you can think of as light with, with a capital L. And then there's emptiness or ever-present big mind. So that sort of gross is life. Subtle is light, infinite luminosity here. And then causal is ever-present big mind. And so as you rest in the non-grasping, non-seeking mind, then you want to have the current between life and light connected. And so both starting in your visualization and then when you're actually making love with a sex partner, then on the in-breath, you bring light down and into life and into your partner. And then on the out-breath, when you breathe out, and you can do it now. If you actually breathe in, you can feel light coming down into life. You see, just go. And there's a fullness in your body. You can feel it. And now if you release life into light, just breathe out and feel it go to infinity. It's like. And all of that just returns to an infinite release. And then you can bring in again, and you incarnate on every in-breath. You actually come down into a body when you breathe in. It's, I can feel myself. And then breathe out, breathe back to infinity, and it's, okay. That cycle of light down, life up, occurs within ever-present big mind, within ever-present mirror awareness. And when you're then engaged in the sexual act, the intense pleasure of life, starting in the genital region, is part of what gets released to infinity above as light. And so both of those cycles get very, very intense when you're doing that. That's the basic orientation that will go with Tantra. And then the phrase summarizing that is that bliss, Realizing emptiness arises as compassion. So when you feel this wonderful bliss circulating and you release it to emptiness, and then you breathe in, then you have a love and compassion for all sentient beings. And you do because you just got a million dollars on the outbreath and now you want to share it with somebody. You're that full. So bliss realizing emptiness arises as compassion. And that's the circle of a higher use of sexuality and spirituality in that great cycle.